what I desire in my heart is to be revived again. And there's been many times when God has revived my heart because I was uh, in need of that spiritually. And uh, I'm thankful that God can do that uh, really every time I come to church. And, uh, and it's so good to see you tonight on this uh, New Year's Eve. And God bless you for your faithfulness tonight. I realize there's things going and family to be with and uh, other things uh, going on. But I appreciate you putting God first. And, uh, and thank you for being here tonight. We're looking forward to a wonderful service this evening as we worship the Lord. And we want to pray and ask God for his blessings upon the service. And uh, I do have uh, just one or two prayer requests that I want to mention to you. Uh, do pray for uh, Brother Miss Holly's uh, granddaughter, Carlin. And she's been in and out of Brenner's Hospital this past week with RSV and uh, doing some better. I think they're at home now, so, but I want you to continue to pray for the, her as she continues to recover uh, from that. I know they appreciate that. And then I, I know that uh, many of you are familiar with the uh, story of the uh, law officer that uh, was shot in the line of duty uh, in Greensboro. And so we want to pray for that family. Uh, the Lord would help them during this time. And then, of course, many, many, many people are sick right now. Flu is a big thing that's going around. And uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's uh, take our vitamins, okay? And uh, let's be faithful to church as much as we can. I am. I'm taking as much vitamin C as I can and uh, whatever I can to be healthy. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, pray for many that are sick. We're thankful for the live stream and a thank for those who make that possible tonight. But let's pray and ask the Lord for his help and his blessings tonight in a very special way. If you have a prayer request or a need tonight, would you raise your hand? Uh, maybe you just say, Lord, I need you tonight. And so let's pray and ask God for his help tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity we have again to be here tonight. Thank you, Father, for our church family. And thank you, Father, for this New Year's night. This is the last service of 2023. And Father, you've given us a good year. We can't thank you enough for your blessings of people being saved, uh, the hearts that have been encouraged, new families that have been added to the church this year. Uh, Lord, you have grown, built this church tremendously this past year, and we give you all the glory, thanksgiving for it all. We thank you for allowing us to financially make tremendous headway with the land and a new property to build upon. Father, you've just so blessed. We're just, uh, Lord, I'm, I'm without words. I just want to thank you. Uh, Lord, thank you for our church family, their spirit, their work ethic. Uh, Lord, the, the, the unity, the spirit of revival, we thank you for that. Lord, I know our people are tired. I know it's Christmas season and sometimes the, uh, the different schedules, the being out of work and out of the regular routine kind of get us off kilter just a little bit. And Father, I know many are looking forward to just kind of getting back in the normal groove of, of life. But Lord, uh, help us tonight through your word. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. I pray that you'd help many that are sick tonight. We're missing many of our Sunday night folks that are at home and sick, not able to be here. And I pray that you'd help them and encourage them, help them restore them back to health as soon as possible. And uh, Father, thank you for those who are here. And I pray that you would again meet with us in a very special way through the preaching of your word, through the singing, choir, special music. And we'll thank you for what you do in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Choir's going to sing for us once again. I know you'll be blessed as you listen tonight.
to gather tonight all over the building. We're going to sing out along with the choir tonight with all of our hearts. Sing out as we worship the Lord together tonight. You're making your way back to your seat. We're going to sing that third and fourth verse together. I want you to look, watch and listen to the words and sing out together. Are you laid aside from service, body worn from toil and care? You can still be in the battle, in the sacred place of prayer. A little is much when God is in it. Labor not. tonight and uh, we're going to receive our offering and as we said this morning let's be faithful in our tithe and offering and uh, and then missions if you want to mark it for missions or building fund or whatever you'd like to but let's be faithful in our giving to the Lord and uh, uh, even tonight okay let's pray and ask God for his blessings ushers you come at this time and um, we'll get our announcements and other things here in just a little bit all right let's pray together uh, tonight father we love you thank you for this time to give and, uh, Father, thank you for those who are faithful in their giving. And, uh, Father, I believe this is a cheerfully giving church and scripturally giving. And I'm thankful for that. And, Lord, I pray that you bless now, again, each gift and giver, the finances and uh, the needs of the ministry here. And we'll thank you for what you do uh, through this uh, offering tonight. Bless the song now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated.
night. Christ was born just before break of morn, as the stars in the sky were fading. O'er the place where he lay fell a shadow cold and gray of a cross that would humble a king. Born to die upon Calvary, Jesus suffered my sin to forgive. Born to die upon Calvary, he was wounded that I might From his throne, Jesus came, laid aside heaven's fame in exchange for the cross of Calvary. For my gain suffered loss, for my sin he bore the cross. He was wounded and I was set free. Born to die upon Calvary. Jesus suffered my sin to forgive. Born to die upon Calvary. He was wounded that I might Lord, evermore may thy cross I adore as I follow the path to Calvary. Of thy death I partake, my ambition I forsake, all my will I surrender to thee. Born to die upon Calvary. Jesus suffered my sin to forgive. Born to die upon Calvary. He was wounded that I might live. Born to die upon Calvary. He was wounded that I might live. So very much tonight. We want to recognize our birthdays and anniversaries tonight. Uh, we want to say happy anniversary to Bob and Dot Adams. And you told me today uh, how many years, but remind me, 62, is that right? 62 years. Let's give them a hand for that. <clears throat> Now, is that yesterday or today? It's today, so happy anniversary uh, for you guys, and we're so grateful for you both. And then Jake Ellison, happy, happy birthday to you tomorrow, and we're grateful for all of the Ellison family. Uh, and then Medisa, uh, we're so thankful for Medisa. Uh, happy birthday to you on the 4th. I didn't see her this morning. She was probably in the children's program, and uh, but happy birthday to you. And then Ellie Staley. Ellie, are you here tonight? No, okay, not tonight, but happy birthday, Ellie. And she is probably six or five now. She's turning six, so happy birthday to Ellie. And then Miss Beverly Smith on the seventh, happy birthday to you as well. Let's give all these a hand tonight. All right, we are so grateful for each of you. And as my pastor said, and as we have made known here, 
May all your stoplights be green, okay? Uh, then, okay, a couple of announcements here real quick here. Uh, Wednesday night service, don't forget about that. First service of 2024, let's be in our place, amen? And uh, let's be here on time, early. Let's, let's, let's get a hold of this thing of serving the Lord and be in our place every time the doors are open. I realize everyone is not able to. I understand that, but let's make it a priority the best we can. And uh, so don't forget about that outreach will happen Wednesday, and we're looking forward to that. We'll have a meal for you at 5 uh, to 5.30. It's a great time of fellowship. We have a great time over there. Uh, some, and it's light. Sometimes we'll have hot dogs. Sometimes we'll have sub sandwiches. Some, sometimes we have soup. But it's always delicious. It's always good. And it's a great time to be able to get there and don't have to worry about supper and, and to get there. And then at 5.30 to 6.30, we go out and canvas, uh, meet people. We have a guy, uh, individual here tonight, first time. Uh, got a door hanger on his door, and so God blesses that, and uh, so I'm excited about going out uh, Wednesday night. We need to get a head count real quick for the meal for preparation. Miss Kelly only does such a wonderful job with that, and she likes to get a head count for meal prep. So uh, raise your hand if you plan to go Wednesday night, and to keep them up just for a moment there uh, for Brother Holly to count for us, okay? All right, thank you so much, and I really appreciate the, uh, the so much effort that goes into that. And uh, if you're not able to, I realize everybody's not able to get here at 5 o'clock. And so we offer other times as well to go out uh, because we believe it is every Christian's responsibility to tell the world about Jesus, right? And uh, so this Saturday, January 6th, uh, we'll be meeting also in the Activity Center. And uh, we'll have a light breakfast there for you. Ms. Jan Lewis helps us with that. And uh, we'll be going out from 9.30 to 10.30 this Saturday, Lord willing, okay, so keep that in mind if you will, you don't have to raise your hand to go there, but another opportunity there for you, January Saturation Saturday, and then also, I want to encourage you to grab some, I think uh, many of you grabbed some out, there was uh, empty slots there in our, our outreach card rack, uh, on the way out there, uh, top of the uh, the uh, information table there, and I want to encourage you to grab some outreach cards, this is a great time of the year uh, to say, hey, what a you know, let's, let's, let's make a fresh start uh, with the Lord in a good Bible-believing church. And uh, so uh, pass these out. Place them. Uh, I was at a restaurant today just picking up some lunch and taking home. And uh, while I was paying for our meal, I laid uh, two or three of these up there on the counter. And, uh, and I, I don't know, maybe somebody will pick those up, get those, see those. And, uh, and so let's, let's be a witness wherever we go and uh, get the word out, okay? And then also, um, don't forget about the Christmas card mailbox uh, that's over here behind the organ. There's several cards I'm seeing over there still. And so let's grab those, get those, because this week we're going to be taking down the Christmas decor. And uh, so help us out with that, okay? Um, and then also, let me say this about Wednesday night service. I failed to mention all the details. Teen meeting, uh, Kids for Truth program, all happening, all in regular uh, services on Wednesday. And then Wednesday also we're continuing our series of Competent Christianity. Wednesday we're talking about prayer. We're continuing that. I know I mentioned that this morning. We're continuing that thought on uh, how to pray. And I know for many of you it's... it's uh, You've already heard that before, but it's, it's good to have a refresher on some things from time to time. And so we'll be talking about how to pray. And so don't miss that continuation of that message Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, okay? And then also, um, if you have not paid for the Christian Counselor's book, I know that we signed up for this um, several weeks ago, um, and a lot of you signed up, and we apologize for the delayed... Uh, getting these in, the delay on getting these in, uh, Amazon wasn't truthful for, with us, and um, so, <laughs> so, uh, but we're getting them in. Miss Holly, are they all in now, or we're still waiting on a few? They're all showing to be here Thursday, so if you want to go ahead and pay Miss Christy Holly, that would be tremendous, and uh, she'll receive your uh, money, and she'll get this book in your hand if you haven't already got one, okay? So hopefully they'll all be in by Thursday, and again, we apologize for the delay, okay? So keep that in mind, if you will. Then also, if you would like to help uh, be a part of the rotation for the Sunday morning breakfasts, uh, breakfasts, how do you say that? Breakfasts? Breakfast. All right, if you want to be a part of the rotation, you know what I'm talking about. 
If you want to be a part of that, uh, we've got about four different uh, families that rotate this out for Sundays uh, that bring in. Uh, they set out the coffee, the Keurig. They, they uh, have danishes, and sometimes it's homemade, and sometimes it's from Krispy Kreme. So if you would like to be a part in helping with that ministry and setting that, uh, that uh, food out, uh, that would be tremendous. If you want to see Miss Christy Holly about that, you can call the church office or see her, and that would be helpful for us and uh, helping uh, more people be involved in that. Uh, then also the discipleship class, as I mentioned this morning, begins this next Sunday, January 7th. We've got quite a few that have signed up that are not involved in an adult Bible class to be a part of this. I'm really excited about that. And I want you to pray that God would bless this tremendously, this 14-week course. We're really looking forward to it. If you have not yet signed up, uh, please text that number, please, that uh, we've gave you a copy of, uh, and get involved in that class. Um, it's going to be a great time of discipleship. So keep that in mind, if you will, Sunday at 10 o'clock in the Activity Center. Next Sunday is also one of my very favorite Sundays of the year, and that is our Vision Sunday. Uh, next Sunday morning, we will give out our church events calendars to every family, and then also we will release, uh, if you will, our theme for the year. I'm really excited about this year's theme. Uh, you're, you'll see what I'm talking about, Lord willing, Sunday morning. And then Sunday night, we'll be talking about some goals that we have for the ministry here. The Lord has placed upon my heart. Much of it will uh, have to do with the new property. And, uh, but uh, we're excited about the year and what God has for us. And so I want you to be praying about that. Be in your place next Sunday all day. Widowed Ladies Luncheon, their next lunch will be next Tuesday. At Southern Family Restaurant. Appreciate Ms. Beverly Smith and the great job that she does with the Widowed Ladies with this ministry. Please keep that in mind if you will. And there's also Teen and Youth Activity Monster Jam coming up Saturday, January 13th. If you would like to go, please uh, see myself or my wife or Miss uh, Christy Holly about that. And uh, we'll be leaving the church about 4.15 if you want to carpool the church. And, um, and then teens will have the church van because they're going to the same event. We'll, it's another thing we've got to talk about is getting another uh, uh, vehicle transportation means, whether it's a bus or a van. And uh, to help with um, uh, the growing need there. Uh, but uh, we'll be carpooling down and uh, ages 5 to 11. And we're excited about that. We'll be meeting in Greensboro uh, at the Chick-fil-A there in Cory. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Cory Boulevard. It's about six minutes from the Coliseum. We'll get to the Coliseum about 6.15 and hopefully get to our seats about 6.30 for the event that begins at 7. And so keep that in mind, if you will. Tickets are $10.00. And uh, we're looking forward to that. So let us know, please, as soon as you can. Matter of fact, the deadline is Wednesday. And so please let us know about that uh, by Wednesday if you plan to go for that. And teens, let Brother Miss Holly know for that. Winter Ladies Meeting, excuse me, Winter Ladies Meeting uh, is Thursday, January 18th. Uh, many of you signed up, and I was encouraged uh, by the great sign up uh, even for the first uh, Sunday out. Uh, maybe second Sunday, but uh, that's still out in the entryway. And ladies, I want to encourage you to be a part of this. Uh, Miss Emily Durham is a young pastor's wife, and uh, she'll be a blessing to you with the Bible devotion. You'll have refreshments, and it'll just be a wonderful time of encouragement uh, to the ladies. And so please be a part of that and see the sign-up sheet for that. If you have any questions, you can see my wife. Also, uh, there'll be a baby shower from Micah and Elizabeth Holly on Saturday, January 20th. In Heritage Hall from 12 to 3, they're uh, registered at Amazon, and it is a boy. We're so very excited for them. You picked out a name yet? You want to tell me now, or you want to? Harrison August. That is a, that is a handsome name. I like that name. And uh, it's my wife's maiden name, Harrison. I like that. Very good. And so um, let's shower Harrison with some great gifts, and uh, he'll need some weed eaters. He'll need some lawnmowers. And... Uh, <laughs> He'll need, some, uh, he'll need some vice grips. I'm trying to help you, Micah. And uh, so he'll need some great things like that. And so keep, us, keep that in mind, if you will. And then one more thing, uh, and then we'll have another song tonight. And that is our winter revival. Now, if you're not careful, this thing's going to sneak up on us. And it'll be here, and we'll see this thing on Facebook where we're scrolling one day. And it'll say, tonight, join us, 7 o'clock for winter revival. And you're going to say, what? Tonight? I thought it wasn't until another four or five weeks. No, it's going to be in about three weeks. Okay, is that right? I think three weeks or roughly, and maybe a little bit over that. So please mark your calendars and uh, join us for a winter revival. I love Brother Hazlett. 
he is, he is always a tremendous blessing to me personally uh, as a preacher. And uh, the Lord always uses him to speak to my heart. He's always consistent. He's not very long. He pastors a great church in Statesville. And God has used him for many years. And, uh, and he will be a blessing to us. We're excited to have the Brady Rochester family uh, singing for us each night of this meeting. And uh, so we'll also, Lord willing, have meals uh, prior to the services from uh, 6 to 645 Part of each service in Heritage Hall, and I want to encourage you to be a part of those as well. They're free of charge. It's just to be a help to you to get your, uh, be able to get your family in a little uh, easier uh, to church, and so keep that in mind. We'll have Wiggle Worms Nursery each night, and we're looking forward to this. Okay, so we'll be making um, uh, some announcements regarding our meals really soon, and uh, so uh, keep keep uh, your ears open for that. Okay, all right. Take your Bibles, please, and turn with us to the Book of Matthew, chapter seven. Matthew chapter 7, and you know, you have to watch pastors on New Year's night uh, because there's an understanding that people are not working the next day, and it's getting about as quiet as I thought it would be right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Raise your hand if you've ever been to a watch night service where you stay till midnight and you pray around the altar. And uh, midnight, you pray in the new year. And I have been to those. As a matter of fact, I've had the opportunity. Some of our very first sermons were in watch night service. And, um, and, uh, and uh, being late at night, I don't know what time it was, but, uh, you know, probably 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And uh, so maybe we could do that at some point, but not tonight, okay? And uh, not tonight. But uh, Matthew chapter 7 will be, Lord willing, be normal time tonight. But a simple truth that I believe will be a blessing to you this evening uh, that I want to relate to you tonight. The Lord has spoke to my heart about uh, this week. Matthew chapter number 7. If you have your Bible, would you say amen? amen? Matthew chapter number 7 tonight. We're talking about establishing a proper foundation. And I want you to begin reading with me, please, in verse number 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. A very familiar passage to many of us tonight. And let's begin reading here. Verse 24, Matthew chapter 7. The Bible says, Therefore... Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken to him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a what? A rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not should be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And let's pray, and then we'll have a song that will get right into this thought tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your word tonight. And Father, thank you for speaking to my heart about this simple thought, but very, uh, re really life-changing. And I pray, Lord, that you would give me clarity of thought and mind, and you'd use me for just a few moments to be a blessing to your people. I love these people. I'm thankful for them. And Father, they've given their New Year's Eve to be here tonight. And I pray that you would help us to take away something very, very valuable tonight. We know your word is powerful. We know it can speak to our hearts. I pray that you'd help us to open our hearts and allow you to do some life-changing work in our lives. We love you. Bless the song now and the message, please, tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving the light.
appreciate that tonight. Our Heavenly Father teaches us uh, all throughout the Word of God that we are to build our lives upon His Word. Jude chapter 1, of course there's just one chapter there in Jude. Verse 20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We're to build our lives upon the Word of God. And just as a building is constructed for a purpose and productivity, so our lives are to be built for the honor and glory of God. I need to turn this on, don't I? Can you hear me now? All right. <laughs> just as a building is constructed for uh, the purpose and productivity, so our lives are to be built for the honor and glory of God. And one of the most important aspects of a large building, I'm thinking about uh, maybe... Uh, the Wells Fargo building downtown or some large building with multiple stories, uh, there is, of course, a foundation. And, of course, there has to be a foundation to any building, but much more so uh, to a large building that is a high-rise. And if that foundation, of course, is faulty, then we know that that building will crumble. And if the foundation is secure, that building will last for, of course, many, many years to come. During this teaching of, of Jesus, during his earthly ministry here, he deals with the foundation. Not only building our lives, but of course what we are building our lives upon as believers. And as we begin this, this new year, we have the opportunity to build our lives upon God and his word in a fresh way, in a fresh start of 2024. I hope that you view that. I hope that you are hopefully going to write down maybe some spiritual goals maybe that you have, maybe uh, more faithfulness to church or maybe involved in a ministry such as the choir or soul winning or uh, maybe you're going to start your Bible reading time or maybe you're going to start uh, having a, a prayer life or prayer time, whatever that may be, uh, being involved, setting some goals, abounding as we talked about this morning. And uh, the building of our lives and the foundation of God's Word will really affect everything, again, as we mentioned this morning. And so I would like for us to notice just several aspects of this illustration that Jesus has given to us uh, regarding building our lives upon His Word. Very simple, three thoughts uh, for us this evening. Number one, if you're taking notes, I want you to notice the substance for the build. And again, we are to build our lives upon the Word of God. Amen? We're to build our lives upon the Word of God, and even and equal to importance of that is the foundation, which is also the Word of God. Now, the Bible teaches us, Jesus teaches us here, that we can choose to either build our lives upon a rock, or we can build our lives upon the foundation of sand. Notice in verse number 24, and what it says about those who build their lives upon the foundation of the rock. The rock, of course, could be a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. We find him a type of, uh, the, uh, we find the rock is a type of Jesus Christ, even in the Old Testament. Uh, remember when Moses uh, was instructed by God in the middle of the wilderness to speak to the rock and, uh, and how the water would gush out and provide water for the people. How interesting it is that that uh, rock symbolizes this type of Lord Jesus Christ and how uh, we have the water of life from Jesus Christ and God supplies our every need through salvation through Jesus Christ. And um, there's so many different types and Jesus is known as the rock of our salvation. And so this is us building our lives upon not just granite, not just marble, but upon the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it pertains to those who are, those who build their lives upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, are those who are hearing the sayings of God and doing them. Now, there's a big difference in hearing and doing. Would you agree with that? Hearing and doing. The Bible teaches us in the book of James that we are not to just be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. Because if we just hear and do not do, we, we really deceive ourselves. We really just, uh, we, we don't uh, really get all the benefits of that. And so Jesus says in verse number 24, this, those who build their lives upon the rock, the rock Jesus Christ, are those who are hearing the sayings of God and doeth them. In verse 24, this man is also considered 
a wise man. Jesus says, verse 24, and I will liken to him a wise man. I don't know about you, but I want to be a, a wise man. I, I want God to look upon me and, and not to say, well, he's a foolish man, but God will look upon me and say, there's a wise man right there. And God said, one of those ways that we can be a wise man or woman is if we'll hear the word of God and do, implement, apply the word of God to our life. I am convinced that in many cases, people come in to a place such as this, a place of worship. They hear the word of God, but we fail. Uh, to implement and apply the Word of God to our life. The seed of the Word of God is planted, but unfortunately it is, there, there never comes forth fruit from that. And God is saying here uh, there, there is, uh, needs to be building upon a rock, the rock of Christ Jesus. And those, uh, that is those who are hearing the Word of God, doing the Word of God, and they will be likened unto a wise man. Now, the, the, the contrary part of that is those who build their lives on the foundation of sand. In verse 26, again, it says, And everyone that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not should be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. So those who build their life upon the sand are those who hear the sayings of God and they do them not. Okay, They fail to implement those things, and they will be likened by God as a foolish person. They had the Word of God, they heard the Word of God, but they did not do the Word of God. So we got those who are building their, their lives upon the foundation of rock. They are hearing the Word of God, they're doing what God says. God says, that's a wise man. Then you've got these people over here that are building their lives upon sand. And we would think, well, how foolish. But the, think of, the, think of the, the, the reality of this, spiritually speaking. How many people are building their lives upon sin? They're hearing the word of God, but they're not doing it at all. They're living their own life. God says, do this, and they're doing the opposite. God says, don't do this, and they go ahead and do it. Because of, uh, there's so many reasons, the trends of society, because they're all wheel over God's will, so many things. But they're building their life upon the sinking sand, and God reckons them and likens them unto a, as a foolish individual. So you've got the substance for the build. Now, I want us to notice, secondly, the storm for this build. In this illustration, Jesus gives us, there's a storm that comes to these houses. Just like there's storms that come into our Christian lives. One of the songs that we sung, I can't remember, I think it was the choir song that was sung tonight, uh, Keep Me Safe Till the Storm Passes By. Everyone has storms. These houses had these storms. And I want you to notice that the same storm that came to the house that was built on the rock is the same storm that came to the house that was built on the sand. Look in verse 25. Both of them, the rain descended, both of them, the floods came, and both of them, the winds blew, and they beat upon that house. Let me help you, if I may, through the help of the Lord. Everyone deals with the same storms in their lives. Don't ever compare your life to somebody else. Everyone deal. Don't ever have this, this, this syndrome, this, this mindset of woe is me, I'm the only one that goes through this. That's not, the, that's not, it's a lie from Satan. I'm convinced that everyone, just as this parable that Jesus gave, this illustration that Jesus is giving, these two houses, they're both, one's built upon rock, one's built upon the sand, but they're facing the same storm. That every family goes through the same storms. What you're seeing is that you're going through the storm and the other family is going through a different storm. And, mo and most people do not go through the same storm at the same time. And that's where comparison comes in because, and the Bible teaches us that to compare themselves by themselves is not wise. God says don't do that. And so, uh, or, or it is not wise. In other words, I'm gonna, if God says it's not wise to do it, I'm going to say, well, I'm not going to do it, you know. And, but the, we find that uh, these storms come and they're, they're going to come to your family and your family may be dealing with a financial storm and you look around and, and it seems like while you're going through the financial storm, 
everybody else is being blessed financially. Doesn't seem like you don't have to nod your head or say amen because it's the reality. I know it. Uh, maybe you're going through an emotional storm and you're, you're looking around for somebody to identify with that. And, and it seems like nobody is going through an emotional storm but you. And you feel isolated. And that's exactly how Satan wants you to feel. But you have to understand that everybody goes through the same storms just at different times. While one family is going through a physical storm of, 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 of deteriorating health, another family may be going through a marital storm and, and, and vice versa. And one family is going through a, 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 a empty nesting storm. They're devastated because their, their children have left the home now. They're going through the storm there. The, this family is going through a storm of having a brand new baby in their home and, and they don't know what to do because the baby doesn't quit crying. And, and uh, you got this storm and this storm and this storm. And, there's, and really there's so many different storms. Just like we got hurricanes and tornadoes and thunderstorms and hailstorms and you name it, and there's that many more plus spiritual storms that come into our lives. The key is the foundation. The key is the foundation. Can you say that with me? The key is the foundation. That was about two of you. Let's try everyone. Here we go. Ready? The key is the foundation. Now, I'm going to give you a couple storms that Christians can face. These are, don't cover all the storms, but get, let me give you a few that, that Christians can face. Because this, this storm that Jesus gives in this illustration is, is really the, the, the do or die aspect of these houses, aren't they? Now, we understand that the foundation is the problem, but it, let's, let's say the house on the sand was, 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 was there, and if the storm hadn't came, it might still be there today. But the storm's going to come. You can't keep it from coming. Uh, and so that's, the foundation is the key. But I want to give you a few storms here uh, Christians can face. First, Christians can face the storm of temptation. Christians, almost every Christian faces the temptation. And really this is broad. Temptation can be very broad. The book of James says in chapter 1 verse 14, But every man... Every man, mankind, if you will. In other words, every wife, every husband, every teenager, everyone is going to go uh, be tempted. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. I don't know what your temptations are, and really that's between you and the Lord. If you want to share that with me in the type of counseling, that's, that's fine. That's up to you. And we can talk about some Bible uh, references that may help you with those things. But, but uh, in, a, in a great way, that, that's between you and the Lord as far as your temptations. But there are so many temptations. What about the temptation to lie? Lie your way out of something. Oh, that's easy, isn't it? The, the, the devil will throw that temptation just as he tempted Jesus. He will tempt you, friend. And that is really can be a storm. It can be a season. You know, a storm passes through. And sometimes storms can last about 15 minutes. Sometimes storms can last a matter of hours. Sometimes it can be a hurricane. Sometimes that storm can uh, have a lot of pressure. And, 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 and sometimes we go through this storm of this season where I feel like I'm tempted here and here and here. And, and, and every man's temptation is different depending on your, what, what, what you deal with. But some deal with the temptation a lot. Well, if I just lie a little bit, I get out of this thing. Wrong. It's a temptation. It's a snare of Satan. And some of us may deal with the temptation to lust. Some of us may deal with the temptation to quit, temptation to give up. There's so many temptations out there, and I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what kind of storm of temptation you're going through, but I do know this. That storm will pass at some point. One of my pastor's favorite terms, one of his favorite Bible references was, and it came to pass. He would always say this. You know, if somebody's going through a storm of problem, difficulty, it will come to pass. Just like storms do come, the sun shines again. It's not always dark clouds. It's not always thundering and lightning. The storm passes by. But you got to be, we'll get to your foundation again in just a moment. That's very key. But just keep in mind, the storm will pass at some point. What, you, what your foundation is, is what's going to keep you holding on during that storm. We'll talk more about that. Christians can face the storm of temptation. 
Christians, the next one, Christians can face the storm of persecution. You know, the Apostle Paul talked about the persecution that the uh, believers in the city of Thessalonica were going through in first, or excuse me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 3 and 4, uh, the Apostle Paul writes, as he's inspired by God, and he says, We are bound to give uh, to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. Hold on, for, keep that in mind. Their faith was growing exceedingly. Should our faith grow exceedingly? Amen. We are to abound in the work and the, and the work of God in every way. So our faith should. But when your faith grows, when the church grows, when God begins blessing, watch out. Because that's when a storm's getting ready to brew. Your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Man, there's love there in the church of Thessalonica. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. I do not believe that we face any type of persecutions like the early church. The early church had persecutions of death. Uh, we live, we're very blessed in America. Uh, we don't, we're not, uh, we're not, uh, we don't, we, we don't live a life, most of us, of being scared and intimidated by somebody coming in and taking our lives and so forth. And we understand that we live in a wicked society and we understand it's going to wax worse and worse. But above all, I mean, uh, uh, all things considered, we are blessed in America, are we not? God has been good to us. And I don't think we suffer any persecutions considering and comparable to what they did in the early church. But we do go through some persecutions. Maybe you went through a, a storm of persecution with your family at Christmas time. Maybe you, your family are not saved. Maybe your co-workers are not saved. And, and you decided not to go to the party, the Christmas party, because of the immorality and the alcohol, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that might be exposed there. And you said, you know what, I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, and I represent Jesus Christ. And I just don't think this is where Jesus was going, would be. He was separate from sinners. Amen? And you got ridiculed for that. You got mocked because of that. Uh, you know, people are so mean and hateful today. I don't know what has happened. But in, in, in America, people are so mean and hateful. And maybe you got persecuted for that in that sense. Let me remind you of those who were beheaded for the cause of Christ. Let me remind you of those who were burned at the stake alive for the cause of Christ. We don't suffer much, but there are storms of persecution that Christians face. What about the, Christ, what about the fact that Christians face the storm of self-reliance? There's a storm that Lord spoke to my heart about, a self-reliance. This is uh, pride would sum this up. This is a storm of, of the devil seeping in in our minds of our own ability, our own capability, uh, relying upon our own knowledge, relying upon our understanding, relying upon our own talents and gifts to do the work of God and saying relying upon the power of God. And there's storms that we go through with that being tempted to become prideful and, and receive glory upon ourselves. Well, that was a great special you did. Well, I practiced a lot. You know, that type of thing, we've got to be careful with that. Christians can face the storm of oppression. Oppression. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says, uh, Peter's talking here. Uh, the Apostle Peter, and he mentions, he says this in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, and notice what he says about Jesus, in healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Do you believe in the oppression of Satan? I do. That is something really you cannot necessarily explain, just like you can't necessarily fully explain salvation. You can tell somebody how wonderful it is to be saved, what you did to be saved. But oppression is, as uh, Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says, of the devil. It's from Satan. And it, and it is a, you, you, you feel oppressed. That's what it is. You feel uh, satanic attacks. It's at Ephesians chapter 6. It's those fiery darts of the wicked. And that's why we've got to suit up with the whole armor of God. And we go through seasons or a storm of oppression. And I'm convinced that, and we find oppression mentioned many times in the book of Psalms. 
And I, I believe that the, the closer we get to Christ and the more fellowship we have to Him, the more active we are in the ministry, such as our Sunday night crowd and Wednesday night crowd and our soul winning crowd and those who are actively involved in ministering to others and having that prayer life and having a burden for the lost, you will face some type of oppression from Satan. Those fiery darts of the wicked. And you will face more of that as you get closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that God gives grace, aren't you? I'm thankful for the grace of God uh, that helps us get through those seasons. I'm thankful that just as Satan tempted Jesus and caused him to go through this temptation, although Jesus did not see him, and Satan, after he realized Jesus was not going to give in, he left him for how long? For a season. I believe he came back, don't you? Because he left him for just a little while. And Satan comes back, but I'm thankful for God's grace to get us through that season, that storm of oppression. Christians can face, we're going somewhere with this, hang on with me. Christians can face the storm of doubt. What is one way we please God? We learned this from our, 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 um, our theme uh, a year or two ago of faith. Right? The just shall live by faith, and without faith it is impossible to do what? To please God. Well, if we're not having faith, we're not pleasing God. So Satan can cause a storm of doubt in your mind, in your heart. Well, we're failing to please God. That's a big deal, isn't it? And so there's storms of season and seasons of doubt that, uh, uh, that come into our lives. We, sometimes uh, people doubt their salvation. Sometimes people doubt, am I, am I where I should be spiritually? And there's, a, there's, a, a, there's a, a time of doubt, a storm of that. Christians can face the storm of being overwhelmed. Now I want to include depression in this. I would include anxiety in this. I believe that that is a reality of, of life. I used to think, well, that's just in imagination and, and, and so forth. But friend, that's real. I do not feel like the answer is in what the secular world is going to tell you what the answer is. I believe the answer is what's getting ready to come up, what we're going to talk about, and we'll finish up. But Christians can face the storm of being totally overwhelmed. A lot of people face that right now. Anxiety, depression, a lot of people. So these are just some storms that we go through. And really, uh, I'm not hitting them all. Physical storms, or, uh, dealing with health issues, and so, family storms, and oh man, the storms go on and on and on. But I want to bring us to this number three, and we'll be done tonight. The stability of the build. So we've talked about the substance for the build. Let's review for just a moment. If you're still awake, would you say amen? Amen. So you got this man, Jesus says in this parable, this is the man who builds his life upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God. He's the one who hears the word of God preached and he hears it as he reads it, he meditates on it, and he does the word of God. He implements it to our life. If God says do it, he does it. If God says stay away from it, he stays away from it. He does the word of God regardless of what anybody tells him. He is between him and the Lord and he's building his life upon the rock, Lord Jesus Christ. God says I like to him as a wise man. This person over here, they hear the word of God too. They have just as much opportunity. They hear the word of God, but they fail to implement it, to apply it. To be, uh, so and so's not doing it, so I'm not going to do it either. My mom and dad didn't do it, so I'm not going to do it either. And they use every excuse in the book. I don't have time to do that. I don't I have the drive to do that. I don't have the discipline to do that. And they use every excuse out of the book. They hear the word of God, but they fail to do it. And so they're building their life, Jesus says, like upon the sand. And they are like unto a foolish man. And then we find the storm comes. It comes over here to this house. The rains come. The winds blow. The floods come. The same storm comes to this person's house. The rains fall and the winds blow. The floods rise. But something, two totally different things happen because of the stability of the bill. I want you to notice the result of the foundation of the sand. Verse 27. Look there with me. It says, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. In other words, it just didn't fall. It was a disaster. And when we build our lives upon the sand, in other words, when we build our lives upon our own understanding. Have you ever said this to yourself? I just don't understand. I have many Many, 
many times. But you know what that is? That is building, and we may not understand, but God didn't say rest upon your own understanding. God says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In other words, God gives us understanding, but don't put stock in what you understand, what you don't. You trust God. When the rubber meets the road, you trust God. Because when we build our lives upon our own understanding, that is building our lives upon the sand, and the storm will come, and you will fall. When we build our lives upon comparison, well, this family never has, this family never gets sick. This family has everything perfect. My father-in-law has uh, made mention uh, of a commercial that he saw years ago. I never saw it, but I like the idea. And, uh, and he saw this commercial, and it was a guy riding a beautiful lawnmower. A beautiful, brand new lawnmower on his beautiful, perfect green grass. It was very close to what Temple Baptist Church has. And uh, a beautiful yard. And uh, we're blessed, aren't we? And we praise the Lord for that God has, God is blessed. But um, he has a beautiful, beautiful home. I mean, it's perfect. Picket white fence, perfect. He's riding on the lawnmower. And he's smiling. He's got his lemonade and his little cup holder, you know. The wife is waving in the background, you know. The kid's playing basketball, you know. Everything's a perfect. And the phrase that comes up on the commercial is, uh, I'm in debt up to my eyeballs, you know. <laughs> And uh, everything is not always as it seems. The grass may be greener, but, but maybe because of a what? A septic tank, you know? And so we've used that illustration a lot. And so uh, it, everything is not as always as it seems. And so you can't compare. Take what God has given you and be content with it and go forward with what God has blessed you with and God, how God has helped you with. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10 12, For we dare not make ourselves over the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. When we build our lives upon covetousness, we fall when the storm comes. When we build our lives upon our own wisdom, our own intellect, our own understanding, when the storm comes, regardless of its temptation or persecution, or whatever the storm that comes in your life. If you're living on your intellect, your understanding, your thoughts, the trends, whatever, you will fall. Thank God we can't lose our salvation. But I want to keep my head above water in this thing of Christianity. I want to keep my testimony. Notice the last thing, the result of the foundation of the rock. Verse 25, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So through building our lives upon the word of God, we have a sure foundation regardless of the storm. I don't know what storms you're going through. I don't. Some people are very vocal about their storms and some people are very quiet. About their storm. You never know what they're going through. You, you just never know. I don't know what storms you're going through. Someone wisely said, and you've known this statement, we either just got through a storm, or either in a storm, or we're getting ready to go into a storm, and that's about the truth of life. Whether you're getting ready to go through a storm of depression, you're getting ready to go through a storm of oppression, I'm thankful that we cannot be possessed of Satan, aren't you? Because as a child of God, the Holy Spirit abides there. We're sealed with that Holy Spirit of God. I don't know if you're getting ready to go through a season of temptation, being very tempted to do something that you should not. I don't know if you're going through a season, a, a, a storm or a season of, 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 of issues, of whatever it may be. But I do know this, that if we live our lives upon the rock, if we implement the Word of God and apply the Word of God not only will God say, I like unto you as a wise man, but when the storm comes, you'll still be there. And for the sake of our country, for the sake of our kids, for the sake of our community, I want to still be here when the storm passes by. By God's help, you know, it's only through Him. Till the storm passes by. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. 
But you can do a little bit yourself by implementing, applying the Word of God. Building your life, not upon your own understanding, but the Word of God. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your Word. Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us. Kind of a sobering thought, a little bit. Lord, help us. I believe I'm talking to a group of people who I believe with all of my heart are implementing the Word of God into their lives. This is a, a, just a reminder for most. But I pray here tonight if there's someone who's building their lives upon their own thoughts and intellect and, and leaning upon their own understanding, they're, they're, help them realize they're building their, their, their home, their, their lives upon the sea. And Lord, help us with this. Lord, help us because the storm will come. The storms are going to come. Lord, help us to be grounded, established upon the rock. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together with heads bowed and eyes are closed. The musicians are playing, but the Holly is going to sing this verse as he sings. I want you to slip out of your pew if God has spoke your heart. And I want you to come around the altar. Maybe you want to say, Lord, help me to build my life upon the rock. Lord, help me to be prepared for this storm. Would you come tonight as Brother Holly plays? Excuse me, as they sing, they play tonight. Would you come? My hope is built here tonight, on not saved. Tonight would be a great night of trust Christ. Thank Jesus' blood Savior. and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Thank you for your word. I pray that you would help us to implement what we've heard tonight into our lives. We love you. Thank you again for this wonderful year. Father, may 2024 be so very prosperous in every way for our church, church family, ministry, to grow and build your church for your honor, your glory. And we'll thank you for great things that you do. We love you We trust you for these things in Jesus' name. Thank you so much again for being here tonight in this Christmas, excuse me, New Year's Eve.
and uh, I want to say Happy New Year to every one of you, and I want to encourage you to um, find somebody that maybe is in your spot, uh, not in your spot, but uh, that you sit beside of regularly or maybe across the pew or something, across the aisle that is normally here and text them, let them know that we miss them. I know a lot of folks are sick, so pray for them, if you will. Don't forget about Wednesday night. Looking forward to continuing that series of prayer, first service of 2024. Uh, ladies, don't forget about the sign-up sheet out in the entryway for the Winter Ladies Meeting coming up January 18th. Also, if you plan to go to the Monster Jam, please let Miss Holly, myself, or Miss Hannah, my wife, know about that, please, okay? Uh, keep all the other announcements in the bulletin handy, please, and uh, let's be involved and faithful to all the activities and services, all right? I love you, church. Let's pray for a great year, and let's pray for a great week. Uh, to continue to pray for the land, the clearing of that, and that everything will go well over there, all right? I love you. God bless you. Happy New Year. You're dismissed. Mm-hmm.